Good evening. Good evening to Pearl. Good morning to Rose. Bless your heart for getting up very early. This is TMS Roundtable. We are global. My name is Dr. Tova Goldfein, and I'm sitting in Israel, and Rose is in Melbourne, Australia. And we have been meeting here every Monday night for this March. It'll be three years talking about uh, inspiring and educating people about self-healing, chronic pain and disease. We have been interviewing amazing doctors and therapists and authors and directors and people that have been in recovery, helping themselves and healing. And we just want to continue <laughs> educating people about the power of the mind and the body. And in the name of John Sarno, the mind and body are intimately connected. <laughs> Rose. Good morning, everyone, from <laughs> Melbourne, Australia. I'm Rose Hoey, an IST psychotherapist. And this morning, we have got Pearl Alpen visiting us. Now, Pearl is a tapping expert. <laughs> she act actually originally came from a, a corporate background yeah. and discovered counselling, etc., and tapping. Now, we've brought Pearl on so that you'll get an idea of things that you can do for yourself or whatever so that you can have your vasovagal system calmed because that's the bottom line. Calming the body so that, as Tova said, the body and the mind are one and that can be reunited. So thank you for joining us, Pearl. And A, tell us about how you moved from corporate world to <laughs> personal world, feeling world. Yeah. Oh, wow. Feeling oh, world. Oh, thank, <laughs> thank you so much for inviting me on your program. I'm so thrilled to be here. So um, I was doing lots of different things, really not finding myself. I knew that I wanted to spread compassion in the world, but I really didn't know where. So... I did dabble a little bit. I like the way you describe me as in the corporate world. At one time, I was trading in selling options. Um, that was my own little hobby. And I was actually visiting hospital visiting. I visited patients in the hospitals and I used to go and just spend time with them. And then I did a lot of voluntary work, but I was always looking for the right thing that was for me. I trained to be a psychotherapist. And then because I, I did come from a very conventional background, but I was always a little bit quirky. And then someone said to me, Pearl, I've come across tapping, it's for you. <laughs> I would say tapping found me, I didn't find tapping, it <laughs> found me. Wow. And I went to learn it, I made it my business to learn. It was easy to learn and it is easy to learn. It can be, it can be difficult to master. If you want to be a master at it, it takes time. But to actually learn is quite simple. And I made it my business to learn. And I must share with you that one of my very first experiences was when I was working with a client, I don't really remember what her issue was, but she came with a toothache. She had a toothache in the session and I said to her, listen, I've come across this thing that I've just learned. I really don't know much about it myself, but I've heard that it works with physical pain. Why don't we just try it for your toothache? And we did. And we did. And within five minutes, her toothache went away. And I was just, that was it. I was just blown away. That was one of my first ever experiences. And that's what do you think happened? Out. What happened with that woman? Do you know what? It's a really good question. It's a really, really good question. She tuned into what it was. She was very specific. So we invite in our problem. This is what we do. We actually invite it in. We make peace with what it is. So we say what it is. We tune into it. And then as we're talking about our problem, we tap very, very gently on certain acupuncture points which then calms the nervous system down. And that's as much as I know. So you made, you made, you made, she, they made friends with the discomfort as opposed to feeling like an enemy or disconnected or something's wrong with me. It's like inviting the, inviting the, you said inviting the problem in, you said inviting the anxiety in, is that what you said? Yes, yes, because our way is usually we don't want to feel things. We kind of push things away. And this is the whole paradox is that once we invite it in, 
and we use a very nice accepting statement and affirmation that we are not our problem we're just feeling it you know we tend to say things like I'm angry, I'm distressed, I'm frustrated, I'm lonely, whatever it is, but we forget one word, which is I'm feeling angry, I'm feeling depressed. It's not who we are, it's a feeling that we're feeling in any moment in time. So if we acknowledge that with a self-acceptance statement, that's when something starts to change. So so my question my, is, that toothache, did it go away for good or did you have to do it again? Because it sort of, it sort of sounds magic. So with that one that went away for good, mm-hmm. however, I remember then doing with someone else a few weeks later who had a pain in her arm and it went away. So she didn't come for that because she came for regular counselling. At the time, I was just being a regular counsellor. I was just introduced to EFT. Yeah. So I said, let's try it for a pain in our arm. This was somebody else. And when she came back the following week, she said to me, it went for that day, but then it came back. So it's, no, it depends. Each person is an individual. So yes, it can go away completely, but with chronic pain, there's a lot more that needs to be done. Yeah, that's what I wondered because it's sort of um, the toothache thing sounds amazing. Uh, yeah, and and yet I, I thought it's probably if, – if you think of chronic pain as sort of like being habitual, to mm-hmm. sort of break the habit, as Tova would say, you probably need to repeat it. That was all, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and you're so right. It's a bit like with any habit, any habit that we want to change – for example, if we think what is a habit, and it's interesting to understand the difference between a habit, a habit and an addiction. Addiction's got emotion involved or compulsion. Let's use the word compulsion. It's something we have to do. A habit is usually something we do without thinking. If I'm in the habit of putting my keys in a certain drawer and I want to change my habit, what I would need to do is put a note out and I'd have to read the note for about a week before I just <laughs> change my habit. So I think tapping every day... And that's why if I see people for chronic pain, I say, you know what, I'm happy to work with you, but you do have to agree to do daily tapping because we have to read the note. And tapping every day is almost like reading a note. Excellent. Yes. Uh, yeah. Well, I think so, that, yeah, go ahead, Brooke. Yeah, no, no, no. Tell us more. That's what, what I think, what I, what I believe, and what, we, what Rose and I think have witnessed with, with, with people that we've worked with is that... Um, Tapping is a somatic tool. A somatic, uh, they can. It's 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 connecting the mind and the body, and that's what Rose does in her work, you know, as well in the ISTDP work. And because you, the, the healing will come from the mind and the body. It's not, you know, so there there is. It's a beautiful somatic, which is means bot, which means body, a tool like meditating or walking or. Um, you know, like some of the ways of bringing stress down is humming or singing or being in nature or, you know, um, but what you're doing is you're, you're somehow physically calming. Like Rose was talking about, sometimes you put your hand, you tell your clients to put the hand, say that Rose, what you have your clients do with their hand and it calms them down. So it's almost yeah. like, it, it sounds like tapping is, is, it's bringing that- insight, I think, into the body, I yeah. think. Yeah. 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 I mean, if you, if we think we've got a, well, we never think of it like this, but it's fascinating. You know, I'm talking to you, my hands are moving. That something in my brain is activating that. I have a cardiovascular system. I've got a hormone system. I've got tons and tons of different systems all working at the same time in my body. But what about the system if I've um, heard some bad news or or I'm worried about something, that feeling that I'm getting in my body when at that instant moment when I feel the thought, that's just another system. And when we're tapping, the idea is that we're interrupting that system. We're actually interrupting that system. And we could call it, it's our energy body. You know, we have our energy body and our physical body, and we're working on the energy body. So as we're tapping, we're interrupting the energy system so that when we're nervous because we've got an exam or whatever it is we're changing the rhythm or whatever you want to call it the flow the chi inside the body and as that feeling changed 
then the thoughts start to change. So I tend to call it, instead of mind-body, I tend to call it body-mind because it's the body that's changing. The manifestation of the thought in the body is changing. And then we get the shift in cognition and then the thought starts to change. Wow. Um, you, you've been demonstrating like this. Is that, mm -hmm. is that the core of it? Because I understood that, you know, you had to go here and you had to go here. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. Um, we start off. We start off by tapping actually on the side of the hands. This is the first point that we use. Karate chop. They call it the karate chop. We call it the karate chop point, or we call it the side of hand point. <laughs> it's now more friendly to call it the side of hand. And what's interesting when we talk about making friends with a problem, if you shake somebody's hand, hello, that's the part that you touch. So it's that part over here. Isn't it amazing? Yeah. We so just make do these friends things. With yeah. The problem. yeah, yeah. And yeah. that's why we tend to say our even those statements. So we, and we call it a balancing statement. So it's even though I have this toothache right now and I'm feeling it at the back of my mouth, I accept how I feel. And we start off by tapping here on the side wow. of the hand by acknowledging. So we acknowledge it. Even though I'm nervous because I've got an exam tomorrow, I accept how I feel. Even though I'm scared of dogs when I walk in the park, I accept how I feel. So whatever our statement is, we repeat it on the side of the hand. And with wow. Statements of self-acceptance. Now, is it okay if I just carry on talking? I've got so much please, to say. Please, so please do. <laughs> That's the whole so, idea. So we also say, which is really, really nice, even though, for example, even though I'm nervous about my exam or I'm nervous because I'm overwhelmed and there's so much in my life right now, we tend to use the statement, I love and accept myself anyway. And we like to use that statement. Why do we like to use that statement? Because two reasons. First of all, our body likes to hear that it's loved. So even if we don't feel it, our body likes to hear it. That's one thing. And the other thing is, is we're, if we're feeling something negative in our body, like an anxiety, it's because we're, mis we're having a lack. And all that lack needs is some love. So we just send it love, and then that's enough to release it. So when we're saying our balancing statements, we're actually loosening and releasing a thought. So even though I'm feeling overwhelmed because I've got so much on at the moment, I love and accept myself anyway. It's a great balance to say. And we say that three times when we're tapping, whilst tapping on the side of the hands. So we'll say it three times. Now we can come up with something we're going to do. But I'll show you the points and then maybe we'll come up with something that we want to tap on. between. Well, I realized something very interesting just now because... You know, we know that when people are anxious, they're usually in yesterday or tomorrow. This is this is usually, you know, just like they're usually worried or or ruminating or catastrophizing, catastrophizing. and this becomes their then they're they're defending it against the real. They're not really getting to the. So what the tapping does is it brings them into the moment. It draws them into the moment. It's this somatic way of just like breathing. And the, and the parasympathetic nervous system and the, it draws them into this place of it like grounds them or grounding. It's another grounding technique to like, okay, I'm in this moment in this moment, I love and accept myself and I'm safe and I'm, you know, and it's, so it's another energetic interruption, like you said. So I'm, I'm finding more ways because look, I know my own family is using tapping and been so successful and tapping is, is, is just a, it's, it's, it's something that many, many people have used as applied. So it's really, there's so much to it. And tell us more about these points. And you were going to share some, maybe some cases yeah. of people that you work with. Well, first of all, what you've said is exactly right, because it's a very, very clever technique. It's very, very clever. And I think that's what I like so much about it, the cleverness of it. Because first of all, in the here and the now, as you're saying, we're having our self-acceptance statement. And I'll just finish going around the points and then I'll, ask, I'll answer your yeah. other questions. So 
we're, we're going around the tapping on the side of the hands with the even those statements and then what we tend to do is we drop the even though part we drop the I love and accept myself part and then we just talk about the pain part so the pain part is I'm overwhelmed right now or whatever it is and oh one second I'm just is something wrong I seem to can you see me clearly it's, yeah, it's yeah, yeah. Fine. hear you and see Perfect. you is that's fine so and then we can you see me because i'm not um yeah, I seem to yeah. have, uh, you can see me tapping on the points yes yes yeah okay. so so then we move to here so is that it you go around from so there to here um, and then you tap where the eyebrow starts on just tapping on the eyebrow point and then you go to the side of the eye point mm -hmm. Then we so it's gentle that. tapping, isn't it? Very gentle, about seven Softly. times on each point under the eye, and then you keep talking about the problem as as you as you go around the points. I'm over six or seven times, six or seven times each point. Yeah, and then on the chin, I'm feeling overwhelmed right now. And you then know, on the collarbone. so then it's on the collarbones. Do you do both at one time? I do both. I like yeah. to do both. Why not? Why not? Why Get not? a double whammy in there. Why not? You do. If you, <laughs> you might sometimes see it on YouTube and places where they just do on one side. I tend to do on both. And then it's the underarm. Oh, the so arm. it is the whole. And then you. They then call you this the monkey, the monkey point. They call that the monkey point. On the top of the head? No, on the side. On the side. And then you take a short breath in and then you blow it out. Now, and that constitutes a round. So if either of you ladies have got something physical that we want, we could do a round on and we can have a go with it. What do we think? Rose, are you, you go ahead, Rose. <laughs> uh, what do I physically... So we can talk about a constriction, if there's any constriction in your chest, or if there's any, any, you know, seeing as this is, we are talking about physical right now. I mean, we can, we can, obviously we know we can tap on emotional issues, but right now, just to try it out, just to get a result, we could, if you like, pick on something physical that we might be feeling. If there's anybody that's listening that would like to say hello and uh, ask Pearl to do some tapping with them on a certain area, certain anxiety, a certain feeling of stress, um, mm -hmm. some some dis some sensation in any part of their their body. Um, if anybody wants to join in from the studio, I see that people are watching, but um, people are listening, and um, we'll wait a minute and see if somebody wants to to be our who wants to be our our wants to come out of this in this on the stage <laughs> <laughs> that would be cool and yeah. share anything that they want to we tap on um we'll wait a minute or two but why don't you we'll do that why don't you give an example um as we're waiting for someone who wants to, to tap on something maybe they're they're having a stress issue or something something going on um anybody the, wants to but in the meantime will you share a little bit more about maybe well some i mean i thought I've got a list here. I've got a list here of things that I that I can help people with. So I'll just give a list here that you could use tapping for. Because what I what I haven't included as yet is because what am I saying? It's so clever. One of the reasons that I think it's the cleverness of it is that not only is it a calming down method, it's also a retrieval method, because it retrieves what's in our subconscious that makes us behave the way we do. And that's how we use it therapeutically, because when people present with an issue, often they don't know where it comes from or what's the root cause of it. So as we're tapping with information that people bring, then they get to see where it comes from because we're tapping. Not only does it calm the brain waves and sends a calming message to the amygdala, it's also changing brain wave states. And as it changes brain wave states, we get more into the hypnotic areas and it helps us to see what the root cause of our issue is. So typically when I'm tapping with somebody in a session, they will remember things and it might seem really really random but their body makes a match with a similar ex 
experience and then it comes into their head what that experience is and that's the cleverness of it and that's wow. the skill of a good practitioner is to help the client find the root cause of their issue and especially with chronic pain when we want to get to the root cause of it that's where the skill and the cleverness comes in because we're tapping not only are we tapping on symptoms we're tapping on how, why did the symptoms get there where did they come from so example example that pops into my head would be somebody with asthma somebody's presenting with asthma and as we're talking about the asthma and the symptoms in the here and now she goes to a memory of um, she has a very lonely time. Her parents were divorced and she used to go and stay with her father and her father didn't have much idea about parenting and there was never any food in the house and a whole story and a whole memory of going to um, memories and pictures in her mind of opening empty of cupboards and there was no food, there was nothing to eat. And yet there was something, I think it was in the garden or something that caused her to sneeze a lot. There was definitely a matched experience with it. I mean, it's a while ago, I don't remember the exact details. However, once we've got to the root cause of the loneliness that she'd felt and cleared that, her asthma went away. So this wow. is the cleverness and why we like it. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. You know, if you think about um, people checking up on Google, for example, the mm -hmm. highest number of checks for uh, chronic pain is back pain. So maybe just could you talk in general about back pain and, and what you do for that? Because that's one of the highest um, uh, inquiries, you know, um, wanting to know about um, uh, yes. the back pain. Yes, for sure, for sure. So um, typically what I would do with a client, there's lots of questions that I would be asking. We'd start off with the symptoms and we'd want to know what is caught in the symptom, what emotions are caught in the symptom in the back because the back is holding emotions that haven't been expressed. So that's typically what's going on in there. If we think about stress or something that's upsetting us and we might be upset about a situation, we don't have the opportunity to process it, we're going to be holding it somewhere in our body. And most of us end up holding it in our back. I think, I think that a lot of, a lot of research has shown that it can be unexpressed anger, but it doesn't mean it's always the case doesn't mean it's always the case, but emotions are stored in the back. So typically what I would do is start with my client with symptoms and give their homework would be to tap on their symptoms. But in our sessions, we would see where, what comes up with the tapping, what memories come up, where there's been repressed emotions that haven't been able to have been processed as a younger person. And that's what we'd be doing in the sessions, would be going to those early memories and very, very gently releasing what was going on in there. Um, and wow. see what messages are in the back. Wow. You know, each person is different, but a lot of unrepressed emotion, or rather, yes, re repressed, not unrepressed, repressed emotions are in the back. It's typically where we store it. Wow. Yeah, I sent uh, for all... Uh, the movie All the Rage, and she's been really busy, but I want you to watch it because it's all about <laughs> anger and rage in the body. And that one, you know, and once we acknowledge it and, like you said, invite invite the feeling in, like, you know, so the message of the back pain is, you know, I'm frustrated at work, but the feeling that's driving the back pain is some repressed fear that I'll lose my job or something. So this is what you get to. So, yeah. so tell us more about people that have, maybe some people don't get, they need it like more. They're not, this is it's deeper, it's trauma. How do you, how do you deal with that Pearl when it's sometimes a little bit more deeper than just back pain or that and it goes away like, you know, you just spend more time. In other words, people, yeah. people you teach people the, the tool and you have them do it at home on themselves so it becomes a, like a, a go-to okay i'm feeling stressed i'm gonna go ahead and tap that's what i do with my daughters they, they're just like yeah we're gonna tap on that you know we're gonna tap on that and you know bring some some calm to the brain 
right, Rose? Yes. You, yeah, don't you sometimes, you know, you said you've used it also to calm down or maybe you've used it with a client, um, you know, as, as kind of like a tool. Mm -hmm. Like it's, I call it a toolbox. So it's one other way besides talking to the brain, we can actually physically, physiologically affect so the energy. Well, I think Tova's alluding to the fact that I just said to her that I used to, when my children would have an exam, I'd remind them to do this, to focus themselves. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, I just find it interesting just to kind of, yeah, who knows? Yeah. What, what made you do that? Rose is also a nurse and a midwife. She has a lot of, you know, medical and, and maternal experience with people that are nervous or anxious and 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 or sick yeah. so tell us more about other other examples of of cases so, that okay so i'll first of all just tell you different ways that it can be used and then i'm going to answer your question so um it can be used to reduce stress tension anxiety fears emotional upsets negative feelings phobias fears of flying painful memories trauma lose weight, stop smoking, feel more confident, fertility issues, have better relationships, attract abundance, reduce physical pain, for example, chronic back pains, headaches, cold symptoms, coming to terms with difficult situations and circumstances and grief and loss. So those are a list of some of the things that I have worked with. Um, and they're all intertwined. And they're all intertwined. They always are. And yeah. if we imagine, I was just thinking about when you tap for yourself and when you go to a purse to, for, for help. So if we imagine a tree and you want to get rid of a tree, tapping on your own, you're taking like bits off the tree and eventually the tree will go away. You know, you're taking it bit by bit by bit by bit by bit. You tap on your symptoms, you get a bit more out. It'll go down and down and down. When you go to a practitioner, you're pulling it out by the roots. Mm. So the different ways of working so both are very very useful tapping for every day calming down is fantastic and I suggest can I just share a way that I think would be really really helpful for everybody just every morning three or four minutes just Rose will be back continue <laughs> okay <laughs> sorry just to tune into your body Notice how it feels and then tap without words. So don't think, what have I got to say? What am I going to say? What? Just three or four minutes. Tap 10 to 15 times on each point. Let your mind have a wonder. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Just 10 to 15 times on each point. And if you do that, Every day, it takes maybe three to four minutes, 10 to 15 times on each point. You're calming your nervous system and you will notice a difference. Wow. Amazing, amazing, just for self-help. Just to yeah. notice how different it can feel. And you can let your mind have a wonder, whatever you want. As long as before you start, you are tuning into your body. So you are getting a sense of how you're feeling beforehand. And then when you've finished going around the points, you just check in with yourself. You will notice a difference. And you might decide you want to do it again. Can you see? I'm nearly done now. And it's just how long has it taken me? Because yeah. I'm here under arm, just very, 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 very gently. You're just rebalancing your system. And if you do that every day, it's a great, great self-help technique. Amazing. Amazing. I'm blowing it out. Amazing. Okay. Amazing. What was the other question that you asked me? Yeah. Um, tell guess, us. Yeah, yeah. Tell us. You know, I'd like to hear about how you, um, if somebody's got PTDS or, you know, some trauma, or I know you do really well with weight loss, which is wonderful, and, and not smoking to stop smoking, which is phenomenal. But how would you work with somebody that's full of anxiety and, um, Maybe on medication. I mean, like this is a really like a, a really way that they can. The medication will work better if they can do something like this. So, 
so that let's let's understand that tapping is a tool it's a tool that i use within the therapy it's a bit like saying um it's a screwdriver it's an implement it's a tool that i use and it's we use it to calm down and to retrieve so when people present with whatever it is, I will treat them like in any other psychotherapy, except I'm using tapping at the same time to retrieve what's going on in the deeper mind that's causing them to be that way. So if it's anxiety, that will typically be something from childhood that's there that hasn't been processed. I find, I find that if people haven't had the opportunity to process emotions in a healthy way, that can typically lead to to anxiety. So, you know, home should be a safe place. And if home isn't a safe place, where are they going to go? Where are they going to go with their emotions? So they have in to a, shut them down, don't they? Shut them down and they're going to stay yeah. trapped by the body. So what I'm doing is gently revisiting those memories and times and then we do inner child's work where we actually talk to the child inside ourselves and then tap with that child. So we actually revisit our child, we talk to the child. It's, it, again, why I love the cleverness of it, because it is slow and also quick. It is simple and it's also extremely powerful. And that's what we're doing. We're getting to the source of an issue and helping the person feel better in the here and now, so that when they, you know, it's all very well having a fascinating session. We might have the most interesting session, people get the most wonderful insights, but at the end of the day, we want behavior to, to change. Mm -hmm. So then we're looking to see what happens in the outside world afterwards. So each case is really different when you ask me how I would work, but we're looking for the source of the trauma. So if somebody's just saying to me, for example, I don't know why that, you know, I'm very impatient with my son. I get really, really impatient with him all the time. And it's really, really irritating me. And I don't understand why, because he's a good kid, but I just get so angry. So as I'm tapping with this person, I'm just talking about her feelings in the here and now. And as her, as her brainwave state is starting to change, she, memories are coming up from her childhood how she may have been bullied by her older sister and she's holding on to feelings of rage so when she's with her child she's triggered to those times so we just need to heal those times and go and meet the child in those memories so that would be a typical thing that i would do in a session however i do want people to know that you can use it for yourself as a problem pearl now you're you just went out you were talking and everything was good but what just changed on your end regarding the volume? Nothing the volume went down. Oh, now I hear you. Now, oh, yeah. sorry. No, it just no, moved no, away no. a little bit from the okay. monitor, oh. I think. So yeah. that's, okay. Rose, yeah. did you want to respond to that? That's so interesting about... What do you want me to respond to? What did you last say? I was just... Because you kind of went out. <laughs> your voice. So say it again, the last thing. About no, would, the volume... No, just no, no, no. You were saying something about before the volume went down. You were saying something that I, I, I wanted Rose to respond to. Say it again, please, Pearl. Uh, so, sorry, Tova. Mm -hmm. Sorry. So I was talking about. Um, so I was talking about a person who's um, who we found out in the session what she was triggered to her childhood memories and it was affecting why she was feeling very anxious around her child and angry. That as we were tapping with the information. The memory comes up of where where she felt like that as a child and she'd been bullied by her sister so that's what she was reminded of so that's typically what we're doing in a session however i want people to understand that the wisdom of the tapping is that you can just use it for yourself on symptoms so just be aware of what your symptom is and you can use it for yourself yeah so you you're, you're do you want me to comment on the on the rhythm is that what you yeah I, about i'm there? curious about about i'm curious about how you know because you also work rose's work is different than mine mm -hmm. you work with people understanding their trauma and accepting it and uh, in, integrating it into their life and healing it and yeah 
So it, and, this and that's is, what Pearl is doing. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. 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 Uh, but are you suggesting it's the rhythm that does it? Is that is that what you're suggesting, Tova? Yeah, yeah. It's it's and it's also it's look, I I I'm, what I what I also would also, you know, Rose and I make note of is that there's some people that that just res, that will respond and use this and it will work and other people they'll just they'll, it'll it'll bring them to a place and they'll get stuck yeah i think you're talking about people getting defiant is that what you're right. saying they'll get defiant it's not working it stopped working it's a... okay can i can i just say that for myself for myself i wanted to work out why was i so in loving potato crisps potato chips mm -hmm. okay and i and I think that the reason people are saying it's not working is because maybe they're not tapping for long enough because my system takes a while sometimes to open. And I tap for quite a while on, I love potato crisps. I have to eat them. I love the feeling in my mouth and I love, and I had to just go round. And I, I think it took me about a good five minutes to see where the memory, what was coming up because I was patient with myself and I gave it long enough to try. And when people say it's not working, it could be that they're just not doing it for long enough because with me, I tapped on myself. I love crisps, I can't resist them. And then I got this memory and it was so interesting to see of myself and my father watching television together when we were much younger. And in those days, the bags of crisps, I, in England, we call it crisps. I know in America, it's potato chips. Um, and we were sharing this big bag of crisps watching television together. So it must have been a sharing bond moment for me, which I wanted to recreate when I eat the crisps. Beautiful. So, yeah. so what I wanted to share is the fact that I had to tap on myself for quite a while to get to that. So, yes, we just sometimes have to be patient. I think you know, what, it yeah. always works. It yeah. always will work. But the speed at which it works might not be enough for some people and sometimes well, that, oh sorry that yeah. also be that the loneliness that you're not getting that loving feeling sorry to sort of use you as your uh, as mm. the example but it, that sort of sense of loneliness without having that connection is that more dominant you know like you've got to do it longer because the lonely feeling is is stronger than the than the uh, crisp feeling Okay, now you're, this is interesting because I've just spoken about this today, actually. I think, I think when it comes, there's a difference between food craving and emotional eating. So food craving, when we crave for a particular food, it's because we want to create a feeling. We want to have a feeling. We're doing it to feel the feeling. Yeah. feeling. Yeah. Whereas if we're emotional eating, we're escaping from a feeling and we, we want to bury a feeling. So with me, with the crisps, it was more about what is that, where's that feeling coming from? Like, why is it? And I just think my system just took a while to answer, to open up. But what you're saying about loneliness is so important because I think loneliness is the, is, is the underneath all the other, is all yeah. the other emotions. It's the base emotion. And the beauty of the tapping is that we're connecting to people. So we are, we are, it's the antidote to the loneliness. That's what I want to say. It's the antidote by connecting. Yeah. yeah. Good point. Good now, Patty's got something to say. Fantastic. Okay. Yeah, I'm bringing it up um, here. So tap on the acupuncture points. The meridian points are where energy flows. And when there is an imbalance or a blockage, sends calming signals to the brain, letting it know that it's safe to relax. Good point, Patty. Yeah. Um, Patty's this yeah. is our show from Florida, usually every week. I'd like to say something about, um, you know, we were talking about person in therapy and then when they're on their own, you know, you creating a safe space. You're having them be, be in touch. Like they're talking to themselves, which isn't, it's kind of like that new age stuff, talking to myself. Like you're having them speak to themselves. You're having them become comfortable with themselves. You're having them to connect and like talk to their little child, big child, big child, talk to the adult, reparent. I mean, I'm seeing all this as it's happening mm -hmm. and you're creating a space mm -hmm. and then wanting them to do it on their own, they might not be able to create that safe space so easily as, as opposed to with you, there's the safe, the kind of like 
pearls there. She's helping me. I can see now how the therapeutic process, why people would want to come to you and do it with you and with you. But of course, ultimately, all of us as therapists want people to heal themselves and open up that, you know, medicine bag of healing tools and heal themselves and occasionally need the, I mean, this is the goal. Yeah, definitely. Can, Patty, have you got any? Oh, okay, good. Yes. Oh, lovely. She did the tapping. Patty, thing. do you want something? Patty, now that you're here and you've come into our yeah. studio. Yeah. Have you got a negative emotion that you want to demonstrate? Yeah. Do you want Pearl to tap with you on something? Anyone else that's listening would like to share uh, some anxiety or something hurting? And we can all tap on it together and help you help you do some heal. Fear. <laughs> Good. Excellent. Okay. Okay. Do we have to have a fear of something, though? Well, we could either have fear of something or we can ask where you are feeling it, what's happening in your body when you think about fear. So let's, let's take it into the body and see what's happening in the body. Patty, where are you feeling it? Where are you feeling the fear in your body? She'll say something. And as we're waiting for that, I just wanted to say that um, for, I'm just thinking of somebody who has fibromyalgia and she said she just taps on her symptoms every morning before she gets up and then she can get up. Yeah. So this is these are ways that you can really help yourself. Yeah. Patty said she, ha she has nerve pain all over, mainly in her in her sacroiliac joints, which is in the buttocks. There's these two dimples. That's your sacroiliac joints. That's where she's feeling but she has some nerve pain all over. Okay, so let's be specific about how it is right now and then we can make our nice even those statements. So it's nerve pain in the... Mainly sac... symptoms in this uh, nerve pain all over, but mainly in the, in the buttocks. In the buttocks. Yeah. So right now I'm have, I have, I would, I'd like to know a little bit more about the nerve pain in the buttocks. Has it, um, is it still, is it moving? Is it um, deep? Is it shallow? And then, then we can do some tapping on it. Okay. And let's rate it zero to 10 as well. So then we can okay. measure it. And Patty, rate it zero to 10, 10 being the worst and zero being the best. And then we can all start. And then we'll tap with you. Moves, moves yes up the spine so it's that's how it is right now so it's nerve pain Eight. so it's in, okay so the information that we've got that it's nerve pain in the buttocks and it's moving up the spine and it's an eight okay so um what i'm gonna ask would you rose would you um repeat the words after me so you're gonna kind of surrogate patty oh and that arms and legs okay so <laughs> <laughs> explain explain what you're doing by the surrogate which is powerful powerful work explain that okay. for a minute. well i'm just going to ask rose to just use patty's words so that i've got her repeating after okay. me right. okay would that be okay so just follow along with me and Tava also follow along mm -hmm. okay okay so just and patty i hope you're tapping with us and then we're going to check in so even though even though i have this nerve pain even though I have this nerve pain. And I'm feeling it in and, my buttocks. And I'm feeling it in my buttock. And it's moving up my spine. And it's moving up my spine. And in my arms and legs. And in my arms and legs. And there's fear in there. And there's fear in that. I love and accept myself anyway. I love and accept myself anyway. Okay, so we're just going to say that again. So we're going to say it three times. Even though... Even though... I'm experiencing this pain. I'm experiencing this pain. It's a nerve pain. It's a nerve pain in my buttocks. In my buttock. And it's going yes. up my spine. And it's radiating up my spine down into my arms. And it's down into my arms. And it's down into my arms. I accept how I feel right now. I accept how I feel right now. Even though. Even though. There's fear in there. 
even though there's fear in there. I'm just going to send myself lots of unconditional love. I'm going to send myself lots of unconditional love. Okay, so now you're going to notice we're going to drop off the even though part and we're going to end, drop off the end part and we're just going to go around the points and we're just going to state the pain part. So we're just going to acknowledge it. So right now... Right now... I'm feeling this nerve pain. I'm feeling this nerve pain. It's in my buttock. It's in my buttocks. And it's moving up my spine. And it's moving up my spine. And it's traveling up my arms and legs. And it's traveling down up my arms and legs. It's traveling my arms and legs. It's traveling in my arms and legs. And up the spine. And up my spine. There's fear in there. 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 I'm feeling it right now. I'm feeling it right now. It's traveling up my arms and legs. It's traveling up my arms and legs. Okay, oh, let's wrong, just... wrong. Yeah, it doesn't matter which hand. It really doesn't matter. You can't get it wrong. You can't get it wrong. I'm feeling it right now. This nerve pain. It's nerve pain. This nerve pain. It's nerve pain. It's in my buttock and it's traveling. It's up my arms and legs. 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 And up the spine. And up my spine. And under the arm. And up my spine. And up my spine. And there's fear in there. Okay, we're just going to take a breath in and a nice long breath out. And then we're just going to check in. So we're just going to see what we notice. Paddy, what you... did you notice? What would you say? You can speak to Paddy. Yeah, Paddy, what do you notice? I feel really <laughs> energized after it. It's just a wonderful feeling I feel of super lightness relaxed. and brightness. I feel super relaxed. Yeah. It's also interesting. I also did actually. It feels really. It felt quite invigorated. Yeah. 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 Uh -huh. Well, she did release a few tears. Oh, lovely. Uh -huh. and, and anything else? We could do another round if you wish. If any, did anything else come up? If you want to speak more about the fear or um, or any other symptoms. And we mentioned fear. Okay. Yeah. Would it be okay if we just do another round when we mention fear? We could. We, if I'm happy to do that, so, Tava, would you like me to do another round? Yes, I would like to do another round. Okay. <laughs> up, to, up, to you, Patty, up to you, Patty, if you want to say anything about what the fear is. You don't have to so tell us. Sadness around this trauma. Okay. 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 And the trauma is an old trauma. We don't, I don't want, we're not going to say what it is, but it's an old trauma from way back or is it something um, that's current? Ah, oh, okay. 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 All right. So could I, so could I just, realistic. Could I, oh, yeah. can I just ask a question? Patty, sure. The fear of the symptoms, is that an old fear, though? Can you clarify about the fear of the symptoms for Pearl for a minute? Because I'm thinking that it's an old, an old, an old um, response. Like a pattern, to, pattern to be yeah. fearful yeah. of something. Mm -hmm. It's an ongoing fear. You see, what I love, can I, I'm, I'm very... It's very interesting. One of the things that I love about tapping is that we use our client's words without judging, with just full acceptance. Um, she knows what she means. And um, we allow, we let the tapping bring it out. So we kind of ask, our, you know, do you see? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of yeah, things that, going That's what I was wondering. See, it could be from the car accident. I, mm -hmm. I was just wondering, because you were saying before about people making a connection to their old memory. 
-hmm. And that's what I was wondering, if she did make a connection to an old memory when she was doing it. Because that was Uh, one of the themes that you brought up. How the Because the past gets integrated. Well, I mean, that's the work, the way I do it. The past gets integrated so it doesn't have have energy anymore. It's a memory, but it's not an energetic memory. So, yeah, that's why I asked. And, uh, you know, it's it's funny. um, Mm. You know, you had another one this year. Well, it's funny because I'm actually preparing for a lecture and I was reading something about from some of the neuroplastic work, the pain work that I study. And, you know, the fear, the chronic pain is not, is most of the time is is the fear it's he's saying it's, the chronic pain is not the problem it's mostly a fear problem because the okay. fear of the symptoms staying and the fear of her symptoms ongoing is keeping the symptoms ongoing so it becomes okay. this becomes this you know this um cycle so, yes. yeah so i suggest yeah. i suggest we do another round i mean good obviously, obviously let's go we you know, this isn't a full session, but I would like to do another round just acknowledging acknowledging of some of the things that we've got here. Okay? And and then you'll tell us, Patty, how you feel. Um, but I think I think I might ask you one more question, Patty, before we actually do the next round, which is how what do you want for yourself? What would you like for yourself? Still, still, you want stillness for yourself, dear? dear okay, um, yeah. Start tapping. Okay. We'll just start. Yeah. Okay. And we'll see. Okay. So even though, even though, even though, I have fear, love, I have fear. stillness and love for herself. Okay. Even though, even though, I'm feeling this fear. I'm feeling this fear. I'm scared of the symptoms. I'm scared of the symptoms. And I do have some ongoing fear. And I do have ongoing fears. I'm just sending myself lots of love. I'm just sending myself lots of love. And even though I have sadness around this trauma. And even though I have sadness around the trauma. It's okay to feel sadness around the trauma. It's okay to feel sadness around the trauma. It's a normal, healthy emotion. It's a normal, healthy emotion. And I'm just sending myself lots of love. And I'm just, pardon? Sending, sending myself, myself lots of love. love. Yeah. Even though. Even though. It could be from car accidents. It could be compliance. From car accidents. Ah, oh, from car no accidents. Word. I'm using her words because one of the things that we do is we use our clients' words. So this is what's come up for us. I want to acknowledge what she said. So it's important that I acknowledge what's come up, all the things that have come up for her. She's given us quite a bit of information here. So I'm using, taking bits of it. So I'm acknowledging that even though. Even though. There's some fear. There's some fear. And it could be from car accidents. And it could be from a car accident. Because I did have one recently. Because I just had one recently. Just going to send myself lots of love. I'm just going to send myself lots of love. And even though I'm feeling it in my body right now. And even though I'm feeling it in my body right now. Right here in this moment, I am safe. Right here in this moment, I am safe. I'm feeling fear. I'm feeling sad. Okay, well, sad and fear. I'm feeling fear. I'm feeling fear. It's an ongoing fear. It's an ongoing fear. I would like to release it. I would like to release it. I'd like to feel love. I'd like to feel love. But I'm feeling fear. But I'm feeling fear. There might be some trauma that just needs processing. There might be some trauma that just needs processing. That just needs processing. And when I'm ready, I will process it. And when I'm ready, I will process it. With the knowledge that right here, right now, I'm safe. With the the knowledge right here, right now, that I'm feeling fear. 
that I'm safe with right oh, here, else. right here, right now, I'm safe. Right here, right now, I am safe. Yeah. There is sadness there and that's okay. That sadness there? There, there is, I'll say it a bit louder, there is sadness here and that's okay. There is sadness here and that's okay. I've been through a lot. I've been through a lot. A lot of traumas. A lot of trauma. And there's some fear inside me still. And there's fear inside me still. Right here in this moment, I'm safe. Right here in this moment, I am safe. Right here in this moment, I am safe. I'm feeling these feelings in my body and that's okay. I'm feeling this feeling in my body, but I'm safe. I, I'm safe and I am I'm okay. Safe. And I am okay. And I'm okay. There is sadness and there is fear. 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 And right here in this moment, I am safe. And right here in this moment, I am safe. Take a breath in and a long breath out. And we're just going to see how the body feels. We'll check in and we'll see what else Patty's got to say. It's not so I've different. got a lovely warm feeling down my arms. Yeah. Patty, have you got that too? <laughs> it's not so different than neuroplasticity when you think about it. It's making somebody feel safe with their their pain, their anxiety, their thoughts. Yes, but it could be that we that uh, you know that when one has had a car accident, that's that might need to be processed because the pictures from the car accident might need to be moved to a healthier part of the brain. Wow. So that's what I would be doing with my clients is just so that they know in their mind that they've had an accident and that's happened, but they're not feeling it anymore. They don't need to carry it anymore inside. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Ah, so she's telling it us it's moved and the pain in the went down. Oh, yes, thank yeah. you. But I was fascinated that the feeling in my arms of warmth. It's blown because, up. You know, one of her symptoms was yeah. the feelings coming down her arms, yeah. up her spine, down her arms. Yeah. So yeah. that's interesting because you were surrogating her, so you were tuning in there. Yeah. And that's what happens. So the we're all connected. We're can all you connected. explain surrogate so people can actually can explain that? Oh, so surrogate tapping is something I typically do with a parent for a child or for a spouse or for for a child, for their parents, which is they come and see me and they tune in to their loved one, whoever it is, and we have a conversation with a loved one and I tap with, I tap with, the, with my client and then their child can change and the child doesn't even need to know it's happening. So that's something that I do. I just want to actually have a look. Safety is the key. Can we do a positive round with safety? Okay. So I'll just finish talking about surrogates and then well, I think we need to go back to Patty because I don't want to leave yeah. the room. I would um, love to sit, talk more about So somebody could come to you. So and... somebody could come to me, for example, I'm just uh, thinking of an example of my child, 11-year-old child, um, gets very anxious and he starts with children, the family and he's moody. So... I would tap with the mother. I remember once, actually, this is interesting. I remember once tapping with a mother at 8 p.m. one night and about her child who was behaving like that. So we brought a picture of him into our minds and we, she spoke to him and, and, she, and she was like, just say the name, for example, the boy's called David. David, you know, what's it like for you? And he says, Mommy, I don't know, but I can't help it. And she, it's as if his energy is answering. And then... I, we do this tapping session with this child's energy and I treat him as if he's the client. So I'd ask the same questions and she aunt, she's looking at him in her mind and it's as if the picture of him is answering. Anyway, I worked with this mother for her child and then the next day she messaged me to say, I don't know what happens, but he just woke up in a completely different mood and he actually made choco drinks for everybody in the morning and he was as cute as could be and she couldn't work it out what had happened. 
something in the energy is traveling because we know we're all connected but through the nonverbal sense but we are all connected and we can tune into a loved one and we can they can definitely change after we are wow after we connecting them to wow. the mother wow. we call them neuro neurons yeah yeah, I, I I love it. I love it because it's really, really good with, with parents, with ch for children, because parents often feel helpless when the children are going through things. And this is something that they can do, which is practical. They get results. Child doesn't have to do anything. Child isn't seen as a problem because children are only doing the best they can. Yeah. Um, parent starts to see their child from a different angle and the relationship can start to change. So it's a win-win all around. So it's my favorite way of working. It's wonderful. Um, wonderful. We need to round up. Rose is starting her day. Um, Pearl okay. and I are ending our day. And you two are starting your nighttime yeah. ritual. Yeah. Okay. But um, okay. is Patty okay? Do we need? Yeah, to she, she, she's yes, yeah. yes. Yeah, she can also contact you. And there's also look when somebody sure. does. So you're saying, you know, because um, there's a lot of tapping on the YouTube, and I know you have. Do you have any YouTubes? Uh, I'm YouTube, yes, yes, okay. I've got some a YouTube okay. channel, and I've got, okay. I'm always on Facebook and okay. Instagram and websites. And, Lovely. Yeah. Lovely. Yes, no, yes. It's, an, it's an amazing insight. I'm so happy after after this time that we, we we had you. I was really thinking about it, and I met you through through my daughter, and I'm um, really, really happy to be not only on this side of the globe with you, um but um and to introduce rose and i talk about the eft and then sort of all happened and i'm really excited that you came on the show yeah and i think it's a great idea to actually do some sessions on like this we could do you know we could see about something like that that would be cool yeah that, that would be lovely if we if we could get uh, a few people like patty yeah, uh -huh. yeah to, to talk about their trauma yeah it's and really stop. Oh, yeah. sorry no, 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 I'm done. I was going to say, Top, are you going to come to my Tapping Cafe next week? Tapping so Cafe. I, <laughs> so I host um, tapping groups in my home, and I, it's a Tapping Cafe where next week is for women in business. Very and clever. Welcome. Very clever. Very clever. Wonderful. Ooh. Have have one have one the week after and I'll come too. Yeah, Rose is coming to Israel in a few weeks. So maybe we'll come to visit you in Jerusalem. <laughs> that, would, that would be stop amazing. at the tapping cafe on the way to the the way to go pray. <laughs> pray and tap. What a beautiful combination. Oh definitely. Talk about definitely. Uh, talk about connecting. So well, this um for anyone that's listening that couldn't listen. Um, and for your your students and uh, friends and um, to people that weren't on Facebook, this will be on YouTube um, in the morning or sometime during the day. I upload it to YouTube with the description. And we have an um, amazing amount of people that subscribe and will see this. Um, your email will be there so people can ask questions um, on the YouTube if they need you. I'll put your email there. Oh, Is there anything you. you want to say about? Uh... Yes, thank you. It's just been lovely, and thank you, Patty, for thank sharing. You, Patty, for opening up your heart. Without your contribution, we wouldn't have a, a a live experience of it, and it's just so lovely yeah. to have that live experience. Yeah, and th that feeling of energy. I, I don't know if you've got it. Have you got it, Tova? No, well? I did feel. I just. I, I'm. I'm a bit tired. But I, I wasn't so connected because you were doing the talking. You were being the surrogates. So you were doing the talking where I think. Sure, but you were, you were, you had your mirror neurons working, so yeah. there would be some flow, I would imagine. Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> I didn't tap into it, but I, I, I just know so, so many people that are benefiting this, and my own children, my very own daughters and granddaughters use it. I mean, it's really powerful, and I, I. I see, um, I see Pearl and I and maybe Rose even talking more about pain and how we can utilize this in various headaches and tinnitus people are suffering and from various inflammatory conditions, how we maybe can, can, can adapt this and use it. Uh, you know, Rose and I are working on a workbook for our work and I think this would absolutely be one of the somatic um, 
um, body movements and ways that people can calm their brain down and, and, and know themselves and be connected. Really. Okay. Well, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> and I'm going to start my day okay. and visit and talk with some wonderful people. Wonderful, Rose. So, thanks again for getting up early. Pearl, thanks for ending your night with us and rearranging your schedule. And uh, this is TMS Roundtable, and we will be back next week for sure. See you next week. Have a wonderful night. God bless. Have a wonderful day, Rose. Love you. Bye. Second, we're going to stop the streaming.